So in Matthew chapter 14, we find out that John the Baptist is beheaded in such a vile way. If you read, you know, up until verse uh, 12, essentially, you'll read that he was beheaded for someone else's entertainment, essentially. Terrible. But then we move on and we read about how Jesus feeds the 5,000. And it's a story that we've all heard so many times before. And one thing that I do like to often remember while I'm reading this story is the timing of it. Jesus did a great miracle, something that, I mean, there's even people who don't believe in God, our God, who, who don't believe in Jesus um, and the Messiah, but they even know the story, you know what I mean? And it's the story of when Jesus feeds the 5,000. That huge miracle that is known even amongst people who are not believers today, that happened among amongst one of the most painful times for Jesus. It says in verse 13, when he heard what had happened to John the Baptist, John his cousin, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. So he was grieving. He went alone to grieve. And being alone is not necessarily a bad thing. And sometimes we just need a little bit of space from everyone, especially when we're grieving. Um, but he what says in verse 14 when jesus landed and saw a large crowd he had compassion and he healed their sick so even though he was hurting even though he was grieving he was going through a hard time he was mourning the loss of john he was able to continue to bless others and ultimately that's blessing other people in the midst of pain that's something that i don't think i'd be able to do to be quite honest with you I would have had the same response that the disciples did send the crowds away so they can go and buy themselves some food so you know even the disciples like i i would have said the same thing i wouldn't have said anything different but instead jesus of course he says bring them here to me come to me and that's just such a a reoccurring theme throughout this chapter um that we can go to him but yeah he calls them he says come to me and he directed the people to sit down he took five loaves and two fish and broke it and fed everyone and they even had leftovers so jesus was able to perform one of the most you know known miracles to many during the time of his deepest sadness and so i think it just it just takes so much love and compassion for others in order to bless people while you're going through some pain Jesus made the disciples, he made them get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Again, having that separation to pray and seek God. And later that night, he was there alone. And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the winds because, uh, I'm sorry, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Jesus sent them over there. Just like how we read before that the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, Jesus sent the disciples on that boat. He knew that the waves would be against them. And um, it says shortly before dawn, he went out to them walking on the lake. And when they saw him, they were afraid. But again, what I <laughs> the reoccurring theme here. And Jesus says, you know, Lord, uh, Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And then Jesus says, come again. He's calling him to him. And Peter only began to sink because of his faith. It says right here in verse 31, why did you doubt? And so I kind of look at this in a couple of ways. First, you know, God draws us near to him, but sometimes we feel like he's not near to us. And like I've mentioned before, whether it's in this video or previous ones, we are not near to him because of our own lack of faith and because honestly sometimes i know i get like this i get a little bit lazy and i don't read my bible and i don't seek god like i really should and then i wonder god where are you when truly it's me i'm the one that's slacking i'm the one that's not seeking him um and if we don't have the faith to seek him and to continuously you know make sure that we are living a life according to his word that can impact our faith and we can begin to sink. So just be mindful, you know, if you're feeling like God has left you or if you're feeling like your faith is slipping, seek him, continuously seek him. His response to your faith is always come. He never pushes us away or tells us that we need to do anything before we come to him. 
the conditions are none. We just need to come to him. So even if you see here, the people were able to have healing just by touching the edge of his cloak. Um, they had that faith that all they had to do was touch the edge of his cloak, just like the woman with the issue of blood. Um, they just had to come to him. So that's all I have for today. Um, as always, let me know what you learned. I post a new Bible study video every day for the month of December in 2022. I'll see you back here tomorrow at 7 a.m. Eastern. Bye.